Hey everybody, this is Birch. Um, there was this interview with Glenn that we did, that Joe and I did. It's probably not posted at the time that you're listening to this, so it's coming. But there's a piece to it. First of all, we went long. Usually in these interviews, I try and keep them about an hour. This one goes almost two. And it covers a lot of different things. It sounds like uh, three people having fun. Um, and But it's it's the second half, and I, I'm, I'm very confident a lot of people won't last to the second half. I mean, not a lot, but you know, some, several of you do. The numbers are usually at least 50% people get through it. But um, the second half gets into a lot of aspects about comics, and you'll hear a perspective about comics and about comic sales and about kind of getting new readers that both matches what a lot of people are saying online and then has a very different spin on it. And there's one thing I want to pull out here, and you know, you can listen to the interview and hear uh, the more direct comment, but I'll summarize because I think it was a really good point, and it's something more people need to consider. For, I don't know, at least, uh, we're coming up on 10 years. This, the drumbeat on this really started in, in a different way around 2014 or so. So not quite 10 years, but, it, and th that drumbeat was, you know, we need new readers in comics. And this was, uh, this was said as a mission like a, I don't know, like it was a big new idea. Now, of course, it's not a new idea. If you have any product under the sun, obviously you need new people to come and buy it. And, it, it, you know, this is one of the kind of MBA 101 type courses of, you know, how do you keep your existing audience? How do you market to a new audience? Is that the same? How do you know what different tactics to use? How do you speak to each group in, you know, separate but, you know, direct ways that help, you know, clarify what it is you're doing? I, you know, that, that's, that's a very common marketing exercise. Uh, when comics, again, around 2014, they started saying it in a different way, like, we got, we have to get new readers. And, and it was really at the expense of the existing readers. And sometimes people actually said that part out loud, like, our existing readers are getting older, they're going to die. A prominent Marvel editor at the time actually stated it that way, which was, a weird way to talk about people who are giving you money at the current moment. I mean, of course, also, people do die. That is a that is a thing. That is an inevitable result. But generally, people don't like to be reminded of the fact that they're going to die. And if you're producing a product that, you know, somebody is buying, and they hear you saying, hey, we got to find new customers because uh, this guy here is going to die, they tend to, you know, stop wanting to buy your product. But... It's the, the part about, you know, getting a new customer that's, that's, that's so confusing, and I think came up during the, the interview, is, you know, what, what is, this is the, the question I would ask you. What is a new customer, somebody brand new to comics, or they're not buying comics, not reading comics, what are they expecting when they pick up a comic for the first time? It's, it's a pretty powerful question, and it's, it's generally when you're doing market research, when you're looking on how to commercialize or sell to a uh, to new audience, that's a pretty important question to answer. What are their expectations? Are you meeting their expectations? Do they have any expectations? It's that last question that is probably the big operative one for comics. As somebody who sold comics for a long time, I can tell you new customers have very little expectations. And the expectations they have are almost certainly not about the uh, characters and the people inside the pages. The expectation is usually that it's cheaper than it is. There's always a comment. New people would come in. It's like, oh, I'd like to buy some comics. Oh, wow, $3.99. Uh, hmm, okay. You know, their expectation was just that it was about a dollar lower always than what it was. Uh, and then their expectation was generally, and this was uh, kind of a, a weirder one, that they could pick up the comic and that would have an end to it. New customers coming in, new, new readers, frequently believed that the story was going to get a beginning, middle, and end within the pages of a single comic. Now, that, that you know, again, we can say whether that's fair or not fair or anything else, but that, that is often their expectation. And on top of that, um, to bear in mind, you know, of course, people have seen movies. So a lot of, of what they're coming into the store with is based on their understanding of movies, not just comic book movies, but, you know, movies in general that, hey, maybe there'll be some subplots that kind of tease out a sequel at some point or, 
you know, everything else. But the idea that comic books are a recurring thing is often a surprise, at least in the way that they are. They know comic books are published, you know, regularly. Um, you know, a lot of people who are brand new readers do not understand or are learning for the first time that it's monthly. But in a lot of cases, they, they will come in and they'll be like, oh, every month. And, and sometimes that's a happy surprise. The unhappy surprise is if they pick up an issue and it is, you know, issue two of a six issue arc. And in this issue, the character's kind of walking around and, and uh, having lunch and not doing much. That, that feels like a waste of money to a new reader. But anyway, I, that, that's just, again, this is observations for selling comics for a very long time. That's how people come into the picture. But the, the interesting part is that if you listen to the comic publishers, if you listen in particular to some of the editors, the creators, um, as they talk about this goal of getting new readers, they'll often combine their conflate, the goal, I want to get new readers, with perhaps some story or plot twist or something they, they, they want to do anyway. For example, when Tom Taylor announced that uh, John Kent was bisexual, I know, please, please in the comments, uh, every time I mention, like, this, you know, Tom Taylor says he's bisexual, people will come in and he's like, he's not bisexual, he's gay, they're never going to have him date another woman. That very well may be true, but I'm, I'm literally communicating what was said. As in, the, the facts. I know, crazy. I, I, I don't need to hear every freaking time that uh, DC has no plans to ever have a date a woman. Sure. I, I, yeah, sure. Why not? Anyway, when Tom Taylor did this, when he said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm decided to have John Kent come out as bisexual. He said, this is what new readers expect. New readers want to see this kind of diversity in comics. New, new readers want to see this different side of John Kent. And, and there's the part that is the lie. Because new readers do not know a John Kent exists. They may maybe have a vague, very, very vague idea that Superman and there's a Superboy, but in most of their minds, that's the same person. Superman is the adult. Superboy is when Clark Kent was younger. And the comic was telling stories of when he was in school. That's, that's generally their idea. Alternatively, they may know the character exists because they saw a you know, CNN or BBC news report saying, you know, the son of Superman is bisexual. So they kind of know that. But then they were told about the character. And that's why it's a lie. No, nobody coming into comics knows any of this stuff. You hear people say things like, uh, well, we had to, you know, we had to change the uh, X-Men lore because it was very, very complicated. And new readers, you know, would uh, pick up the comic and and uh, they wouldn't understand why there was 50 different X-Men running around and time displacement and all the rest of that stuff. No, that's again, that's a lie. That's assuming that the new reader has some grounding or some preconceived notion of what the X-Men should be. And then when they pick up the comic, it's different from that. But that's not how it works. New readers are a blank slate. Again, having watched many of them come into the store, they come in with no expectations. They do not have these expectations that the character has to have a certain percentage of demographical makeup or that, you know, if this character has traveled back in time and, you know, it, it, none of that. That's, that's, again, that's not how new, comic, new readers operate. I will bet the majority of people listening to this right now, you did not start comics on a number one, you know, spoon fed story. You most likely started comics reading a comic that had elements that made no sense to you. And that was the exciting part. You want to go figure out what these things meant. If you read Fantastic Four, you picked up an issue. You're like, wait a minute. Why do these people have powers? Comics used to understand this. The origin story and retelling the origin story was kind of an exciting thing that they would put in. And in many cases, like with Spider-Man and Superman, they did it, and Batman for that matter, they did it so much you started to dream about pearl necklaces uh, spilling out into an alley. <laughs> this could be taken wrong. Anyway, it, the, the point here is new readers are literally a blank slate. They do not have expectations about how simple or complicated the comic is. 
They don't have expectations about, you know, if, uh, if I mean, hell, look at people, and, and this cuts both ways. People say, well, new readers are going to be confused why there's a uh, uh, Latino black Spider-Man and a white Spider-Man. And they're going to kind of know that there was a white Spider-Man because you remember a Tobey Maguire movie at one point or a Tom Holland movie. Uh, but they're confused by this other Spider-Man. And so we have to make sure that, that that makes sense to a new reader. Except that's comic writers and the publishers overthinking it for themselves. People are coming into the comic and opening the book up. If they are told, hey, you know, there's a, there's a grown-up legacy of Spider-Man here and Peter Parker swinging around, the one that you may recognize from the movies, and here's this other kid with spider powers, and every now and then they team up and have a fight. New readers go, okay, good. They're good. No new reader picks up a comic and goes, wait a minute. They're both called Spider-Man. My brain can't process this information. I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, it's too complicated. I remember seeing uh, a, somebody talk about, well, you know, I think it's going to be confusing for new readers who uh, want to know why, you know, Gwen Stacy is dead. But then there's uh, Gwen Stacy, a superhero called Spider-Gwen. Now, in fairness, new readers might find that stupid because uh, variant characters are uh, are ridiculously overdone. But new readers, again, coming into comics are going to be like, oh, okay, there's two of them. New readers roll with this stuff really easily if one thing is true. And the one thing has nothing to do with clarity. It has nothing to do with how, uh, how, how much you, you, you spoon feed the story and the plot to the reader. It has nothing to do with entry points or jumping on issues or, you know, that uh, we can proudly say that this uh, book is LGBTQ friendly or any of that, that. None of that stuff matters. There's only one thing that makes it work for a new reader. They like the story. They're entertained by the art because they see the art first. The art is typically the thing that gets them in the door. And they read the comic and they enjoy the story. If you can have art that looks pretty good and a story that catches you, you're done. New readers are happy. They do not need a specific makeup of a team or they do or, or you know, we can't we can't have too much time travel bullshit because that was always the one with the X-Men. I'd be like, oh, man, Claremont. It's uh, too convoluted. People are just not going to be able to understand the, the time travel. And then, the, you know, uh, Rachel is back in time and they're in Australia now. And they can't, like, ah, oh, new readers will never, ever be able to figure this out. Yeah, except tons of new readers joined the X-Men run between issues 100 and 250. You need to go higher than that. 300. Tons of new readers came onto the comic during that era. They did not have problems. They, they figured it out. If you look at the sales growth of both comics and just the X-Men in particular, all this, this talk about extremely convoluted, hard to understand, it's impossible for a new reader to figure out what's going on in a Claremont comic. Oh yeah, then why did those comics grow from 75 to 100? I mean, because the X-Men was in cancellation land. When Claremont started that book, it rose to selling millions of copies per title. Where did all those new people come from? Came from somewhere. Somehow they were able to parse the absolutely ludicrous, you know, very, very difficult to understand Chris Claremont plots and subplot scripts. Somehow, somehow, some way, they figured it out. A lot of what we've been told around uh, new readers and kind of how the comic book works is bullshit. It's people who honestly want what they want, and they're going to try and insert some of these other things into it to you know, justify their argument. Again, I, I think people should be more straightforward. Tom Taylor had a story idea that involved making John Kent bisexual. Then just say that. Hey, I'm, uh, I've decided that uh, I've got a good story idea I think it'd be interesting to explore. John Kent being bisexual, that's what I'm going to do. DC approved it. That The end. You don't need to wrap it up with a bunch of, well, but we thought this would be new reader friendly. New readers really expect that this kind of, New readers don't even know any of what you're doing. You can't publish a comic that's got, you know, Wildstorm characters in Gamora and, you know, introduce characters from your Suicide Squad run 
and then turn around and say, oh, this is all about new readers. And fuck that. Anyway, check out the interview when it drops. It's really good. Um, has a lot of really great insights into the comic industry. Always does when we're talking to Glenn. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.